there's a well-known case from the year 1986 that illustrates the type of dispute that often comes up between a self-employed person and HMRC. One of the reasons this case is so interesting is that the self-employed person in question was a very successful barrister. This case is also a great illustration of the progress of litigation through the courts when the courts are called upon to clarify a piece of law and explain exactly what it means. In this case, the courts were required to clarify the meaning of a piece of tax law. It said that a self-employed person could claim as a tax deductible expense any item purchased wholly and exclusively for the purpose of their trade, profession or vocation. A simple example would be a self-employed house painter who bought protective clothing and some paintbrushes to allow him to do his job. Those would qualify as tax deductible expenses. But then a claim came along that required a lot more thought about the meaning of the law. Anne Malaloo was a barrister in London in 1986 and a very busy one at that. She appeared in court on behalf of clients most days and also spent a lot of time driving between different courtrooms. Now, as a female barrister, in order to be heard by the court, Anne needed to abide by a very strict dress code. I'm not referring to her barrister's wig and gown. What I mean is the everyday clothes she wore underneath them. The Bar Council rules said, for example, that a female barrister's dresses and suits had to be of a dark color. Her shirts had to be white and most definitely with long sleeves and a high neck. Shoes worn in court had to be black. If she'd failed to dress in this way, Anne Malaloo ran the risk of the judge declaring, I cannot hear you. This isn't an indication that a judge has hearing problems. It simply means that the court refuses to allow a barrister to speak if he or she is improperly dressed. The problem was, Anne only bought these plain and she thought rather boring clothes for professional use, and stated that she never wore them at any other time. In the context of one tax year, she had to spend around 500 pounds on buying and cleaning these clothes. And she saw this 500 pounds as a justified tax deductible expense, much in the same way that our house painter was allowed the cost of his protective clothing. But HMRC disagreed and refused to allow the expense which she'd listed on her annual tax return. So, all concerned went to court. This case went from the lowest court in the English system to the highest, in order to get final clarity on what the law meant. What exactly are purchase items that are wholly and exclusively for the purposes of trade, profession or vocation? When this need for clarity happens, Lawyers say it's because the law on this topic is a grey area, rather than clearly black or white. And when it does happen, the unfortunate parties are obliged to follow a legal procedure involving a whole series of appeals until the highest court is reached. Did Anne Malaloo's black suits and white shirts fall within the definition set out in tax regulations? Were these clothes wholly and exclusively for the purposes of her trade, profession or vocation? What do you think? Well, the outcome was that the House of Lords clarified the law in this area by ruling against Miss Malaloo. The court said that regardless of what she had consciously thought about when she bought the clothes, as a human being, she had to wear the clothes in any case, for both warmth and decency. And in doing so, she was using them for a personal rather than a professional purpose. The court did say, however, that a nurse or a waiter who were required to wear a uniform for work could regard those costs as deductible expenses. So presumably Anne Malaloo was at least entitled to deduct the cost of her wig and gown, if nothing else. 